the steering wheel. It's the major part that connects you to the race car, but ultimately, this is not the part of the race car that steers the car. When we think of the steering wheel and we think of steering input into the race car, you think that you're in control of the car, driving, turning left into the corner, turning right to t pull the car out of the corner. But what's really happening when you're turning that wheel is you're turning the tires of the car that make the contact with the racetrack. One of the biggest things that I come across new teams that they miss is the importance of knowing what's happening at their tires when they turn the steering wheel. I mean, could you imagine if you're going down the straightaway and you're holding the wheel straight and you go to turn into the corner and you turn left and the car doesn't turn to the left, it just seems to want to bounce to the right. Or maybe it turns a little farther to the left than you might have put input into it. Well, there's reasons for that and there's ways that we can fix it and correct it. And this is the gray area. One of the biggest overlooked areas on the race car happens to be bump steer. Um, probably more commonly in stock classes than in maybe higher forms of, of motorsports, but why, why is that? Is it because that we put our trust into engineers who design cars to drive grandmother to the grocery store? Or did we just trust that our chassis builder, you know, put that in his thought process while he was designing the front end on a very sophisticated car like a dirt late model. Um, regardless of what we thought, more than likely you were one of those people or somebody you know, this is one of those issues that you overlooked. A very, very simple tuning option. It's something that has to be checked um, because if there's bumps near in the car, that means that during compression and rebound in the suspension, what you have is actual steering of the wheel, left or right. Um, as I was saying before with the steering wheel. If you are turning your wheel one way, and when the car goes into compression or bump, um, or into rebound even, if you know after you've entered the corner, what if the wheels are turning a different direction opposing what your steering input is? That can make the car very, very hard to drive. Um, very unpredictable and maybe that's why a lot of people are just running into each other I, I, I don't know what we have here is a bump steer gauge from Longacre there's many variations of it and some people will say oh one is better than the other but if you've never checked a bump steer on your car it really doesn't matter you could do this with a piece of equipment like a 2x4 very simple um, you don't need a, a dial indicator or anything like that to check the bump in the front end. To be very accurate, you do need a bump steer gauge that measures in thousandths of an inch. Now what this does is this gauge here will measure how much this wheel turns in and out at any given uh, amount of travel. On the left side, we always want to check in compression and rebound because the left side of the car is always either going into compression or coming into rebound as you're going into the corner and the weight comes off of the left side of the car. Um, we set our gauge up at zero at ride height with the toe set prior to any, any um, measuring of the bump. If you were to not measure this at ride height, all of your, your geometry is wrong. Um, if there's any extent where the wheel travels too far into compression or too far into bump, which typically when you're racing it has a limit of travel where it's at, so we want to go with, with at ride height and with the toe set with the front end facing straight ahead. And we'll talk about setting the toe in, in another, uh, another episode. <clears throat> On our left side, and we're going to go with the left, we would set this up at ride height align our guide and our dial indicator on the zero. Now what I always typically like to do is I like to take the car into the first amount of compression first, check my reading, see where it goes after I've set my dial at zero, then go to the full extent of travel of rebound. So wherever the, wherever the front end stops before the tire lifts off the ground, um, you want to take it as, as far as you can and if that means setting this gauge down at the 
two inch mark, the one inch mark, wherever you have to, to adjust this on the front end, um, that's just what you have to do. So whatever, whatever it takes to, to get the readings within the travel of that suspension, that's, that's what has to happen. So I'm using just a, a basic floor jack and I'm gonna use that to raise and lower the car. And I'll take this and I have my little tube here and that's holding this front end where it would be once the car was at ride high. So if this car was sitting here with a shock and a spring on it, um, scaled and ready to race, this is where the location of this uh, front end would be. So I'm gonna take some of the weight off of it. I'll pull my little pin out here. my gauge back to zero. I will adjust my dial indicator to the zero mark. And I'm just going to take it into a, a, about an inch of compression. I want to see what happens to the gauge. And it looks like we moved about, about 10 or 15 thousandths. So I'm going to go to the next inch of travel. We've moved about five thousandths there. And a little bit more just to check and see where we go. Now I don't believe this front end will ever go to that extent on the left side. On the right side, I typically only will check in compression only. I don't even worry about the rebound angles um, because the car is always typically rolled over onto the left front. Now we're gonna come back down and we'll see just how much the suspension moves. And this is actually giving me a reading of how much this wheel is steering just while it is either, you know, compressing the suspension or rebounding the suspension. Now, ideally, we would get this to zero. We would get absolute, we would want no movement whatsoever because we want all of the steering input to the tires to be what we input it at the steering wheel. Um, if this is moving, traveling more than... I say 15 or 15 or 20 thousandths, you will probably have a noticeable effect um, on the handling of your race car. So we want to do make those changes to either the distances where the tie rod attaches to the spindle. Um, on a stock clip car, there's lots of options for drag links. Um, you can change if the rules allow, you can change to, there's different companies that make drag links that have different heights. Um, that will give you some bump steer adjustment. Um, the angles of the spindles will give you different bump steer adjustment. Um, and even your caster and camber will affect all of that. So anytime you change the caster or camber in the front end, make sure that you do check the bump because you're changing the, the angles that these tie rods are. And there's a, a big explanation of why that happens. It all has to do with, you know, radiuses and travel of suspension and lengths of arms and lots of information. But if you just check it, make your adjustments to the tie rod and height um, and figure out what changes you have to make to get the bump out of your car, you will have a much better handling car and a car that responds to you rather than the bumps in the racetrack. And I hope this helps everybody today. And uh, again, thanks for watching on the DRC.